let's see about our pyromancy. I can equip power within. So you only use it once, then it lasts for a while. Pyromancy of Carmina, who harness the power of flame to actualize the inner self. Short strength endurance boost, but lose HP. Excessive power eats away the life force of the caster. And like all dangerous spells, power within was kept secret for eons. So this makes me better at combat in general, I think, but it also hurts you over time. It doesn't hurt to equip because it's I have nothing else on my character right now. Not the worst. Let's try to get our asses out of here. I want to make my way back to Firelink. And probably head off towards Sens at that point. I'm trying to remember if there are any more optional bosses or directions I can check out right about now. And there's not much. There is Pinwheel, but Pinwheel... I already ring this, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we had the whole cutscene happen. For me, the issue is pin, with Pinwheel is just it's kind of annoying to do the whole zone and then essentially have to redo the whole zone when I go back in again. You might be able to warp there. I'm not fond of doing that areas, uh, area early. I don't remember the exa exact logistics. I know that, uh, I think the, the whatever of Giants area after that, ha I think that has points of no return and stuff built to it, but I can't go there yet because of the barrier, but I, I think Pinwheel's area just ends. And then you're like, oh shit, dead end. I can't, and, I, and then you just have to turn around and go back or have, uh, have your ring uh, your uh, your homeward bone set to warp back, but then you have to then re-clear that zone again, I think. I don't remember if... I guess it doesn't matter if Pinwheel's bonfire... No, it doesn't matter if there's a warp or not, because there isn't a bonfire there. Unless they added one. Let's get our asses out of here! You are unnerving looking. Gotcha. We could go to Ash Lake, but then I'd have to climb back up. I also can't think of a lot of reasons I'd want to go back. And I think it's best to have the Lord Vessel before I do much of anything else, so... Yay! Let's do Sen's Fortress today! Welcome to hell! So this is the path I'm familiar with, because this is the only way I ever play Blight Town until, until this time, is I'll, I would always just go this way. Because I always had the Master Key, which gives, which I believe just gives you direct access to this location. In fact, when I beat the- when I finished my YouTube series of this game in 2013, I went into New Game Plus and screwed around afterwards, I believe. And I was baffled by the realization that the moment I got to Firelink, I could just go and fight Quaylag immediately. And that was and that was the first boss I killed in that playthrough in New Game Plus, which was not on camera or anything. And I was like, this feels weird and wrong. How is this possible? That's kind of just the... Oh, you're important. I remember this now. Ow. Could you cut it out? Hey. They really made those symbols almost identical, didn't they? Oh man, this is gonna be- this might be rough. Alright. I just realized I didn't arrest the local bonfire, so I have to run all the way back if I screw this up. Ow. Running away. It is very important that I do not die. Because I do not want to run all the way back here from the other Chaos Witch. I've got a lot of healing items on me. Just keep moving, just keep moving. Moving, 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 moving. Ow. You son of a bitch. You s- Oh, come on. 
Oh, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Are you re are you for real right now? Oh my god. I had no idea how annoying that could be. Holy shit. not working, is it? Ah, oh, shit, they're hitting me anyway. Huh? Did he come back up? No shooting at me from down there. Son of a bitch. God damn. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. That's pretty bad. They're just so fast. Like, obnoxiously so? Come on. It's okay, I've got heals. Oh, did he fall off? Cool. I probably shouldn't keep using the regen item, or the, the status ailment cure, because I'm gonna burn through them so fast and they're not not the most common resource. Oh shit, the dogs. Screw that guy. It's brutal that they don't even drop the one that cures the ailment that they hit you with. That guy fell off. Oh, he's dead. There we go. What a bunch of assholes. Bunch of gay dang assholes. Uh, are you guys even vulnerable to this shit? Oop. Lost my lock on. That's not even reaching you, is it? Well, you know what? Uh. <clears throat> Manly mode. Don't get killed by dogs. Fuck. 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 Get out. Get out. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit! God damn from software dogs. Oh, they make the ah! Oh, God damn it! Ah! Uh, you idiot! Why didn't you rest at the bonfire? It was upstairs. It was like around the corner. Uh, are they all respawned now, or they do not respawn? I'm actually not sure. I think I've heard about them not respawning as sort of like a weird, like godsend by, like an, an act of mercy by From Software, where they might have chosen not to make them respawn and make them one of those rare examples of an enemy that just stays dead because those are the oh my goodness most rapid fire douchey needles of instant toxin not quite instant it takes two hits but holy crap i was ready for the toxic i wasn't ready for the fact that the the flurry of needles was gonna stun lock me And then despite all the, uh, the hype about how tough and dangerous that part is, I get through that alive and I get killed by the goddamn dogs. Just from software's tried and true way of killing players is just having some bastard of, of uh, just some, ah. Uh, is it here or here? No, it wouldn't be here. You'd be constantly being, having rocks thrown at you if it was there. I never remember when the witch shows up. I just know that she's around here. Hello. Nito. Bye bye. It's time for a heaping case of learning from our mistakes. Yeah. That'll make it much shorter. 
So if you're wondering why I'm so dedicated to going that way, it's actually the location of a very rare item, which I think is available in, uh, at this point in the game. In fact, I think I saw it in there. <clears throat> it's one of the very few places you can get a Firekeeper Soul. Last place I found one was the chapel. And a, a few of the places you can get one is by literally killing a Firekeeper and getting its soul. I don't remember if there are even... Off the top of my head, I don't remember if there's any more options for getting one besides here in the chapel as far as, like, environmental pickups go. Not sure. But now I'm sad and beef jerky zombie-like. Tell me he's dead. Tell me he stayed dead. Please. Yes. 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 Now I just need to figure out how to not be dead from these bastards. Hey buddy, die. Who's a dead doggy? Yes you are. Uh, what the? Where's this Matrix dog? And this is how I should have been doing it. Too focused on being evasive when I can just block the bastards. Hey there. Who's a doggy? Dead doggy. Wow. This is going way better this time. No, 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 no. Wow, my, uh... My flask is bad. <laughs> it's just not very strong. I guess all the more reason to be bringing these. Nope. Because the Firekeeper Souls are how you make your flasks actually stronger. Which, as you might imagine, is kind of a big deal. Okay, you're annoying. Die. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Screw you too. I think you just die if you go that way. I don't think there's a... I don't think this is really a route. I think I got the main attraction already. That's what I thought. Yeah, as far as... If I remember correctly, uh, once you turn on Power Within, you're just stuck with it for a while. And it will slowly drain your health down to basically nothing. So it's actually... It's good for... It's probably best for boss fights. Because you get a damage boost in a context where you're probably going to be healing periodically anyway. And while you're fighting... They haven't been there yet, have I? Because it wore off. Cool. Like, during a boss fight, you're probably healing every now and then anyway. And the, the rate at which you take damage from it is unlikely to be a deal breaker for you, probably. And, uh... It's a situation where you're constantly in combat, so it's actually being used effectively. Whereas in some of these other situations, you're sitting here and you're like, Oh, cool, I gave myself a damage boost. Ah, shit, the fight's over. And then you're still suffering the consequences of activating the power, but there's no one you're fighting anymore. I remember that being way less safe. Huh. First try. Go away. Go away. You're so pesky, like some kind of mosquito. Oh. Right. Ooh, that's a fun looking set. The banishment set. And a sorcery. Oop. Die. Oh, hi. How you doing? Die out. Die. I actually might give a sorcery run a try. I'm not sure. Oh, geez. Hi. Uh, did he die? Oh, he's, he's still falling. Wow. That was a process for him. For me, there's a certain idea that, like, the proper 
or like the main Dark Souls experience is to play as a melee character primarily. You can play, you can have a little tricks here and there, which is fun. In particular, Neo was really good about having and enabling you to play as a character that has a bunch of tricks while being primarily melee and stuff. I love the bag of tricks I had as a ninja character in, in Neo, where I had all of those, uh, so many bombs and shurikens and fun things to screw around with while I was also slicing people up. They were part of the game, probably. Uh, so I, when, in, by default, whenever I'm trying to do a proper playthrough, I'm always, I always do melee first, but I might do a new game plus playthrough. Oh shit, but you can't respec. I'll, I'll have to check to see if they patched, if they added anything in the remaster. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, because the, the big appeal for me is in, uh, in Dark Souls 2 and on, they had respec mechanics where you could just start your character over midway through a run, and you just would maintain your level, but you could just respend all your points, which meant you could suddenly, because ch uh, you could suddenly change from a melee character to a spellcaster. So what I, what I would do is I would do pure spell... Oh, what the fuck, man? I would do pure spellcaster runs, where I'm not even a melee character at all, really. I'm just killing things with spells, and that's it. Really? Fuck! Like, I would do, like, a, this is my spe my hex run, and this is my sorcery run, and this is my lightning run, and stuff like that. And I, I like doing that kind of stuff, but it, it definitely, like, makes most of the game way easier, because spellcasting makes the game significantly e easier, usually. But one of the reasons that it was useful is that, uh... You have to do a significant amount of the campaign just to get the spells in the first place. So doing it in New Game Plus, like, play the play the game in New Game as a melee guy, beat the game, get all the spells and shit. Then in New Game Plus, respect your character to be a spellcaster, and then, and then be a spellcaster throughout New Game Plus. Like, it was a really fluid way of being able to do that kind of run. But yeah, I'm thinking now, like, unless they added a respect mechanic, which I don't think existed in the first game, It'd be kind of hard for me to do a spellcasting run, unless I just started off with nothing, like normal, and slowly accumulated some spells. Got super mixed feelings, though. I've done it in the past, where I just do a bunch of runs of particular Souls games, and so it's always tempting, because I do like the games quite a bit. But at the same time, I'm like, ah, do I do a spellcasting run, or do I do a new- or do I do a, a multiplayer, like, co-op run? Or do I do a modded run where, I, like, uh, there's randomized items mods where you can play Dark Souls uh, Prepared Die Edition and you, the all the different items are randomized, so you what you get throughout the game is inconsistent, and you get to deal with having completely different outcomes from playthrough to playthrough. So you can't you can't just go like I'll go to that bridge and get the claymore. Or what caught my attention is that there's there's mods like uh, Prepare to Die Again where they they actually move the enemies around and they change the campaign up and i find that to be really cool because one of my favorite features of dark souls 2 was that when you played the game in new game plus new enemies and shuffled around enemies happened and even some boss fights had like additional enemies that would show up during them and like there was just a bunch of changes to the campaign making it so that you weren't just playing the same game like in dark souls 1 largely when you play new game plus it's just the stats that change the enemies have some higher stats, and that's more or less it. I just find that kind of disappointing. So it's just a stats race, and you just keep, you just keep playing an increasingly harder campaign, but only for stats reasons mostly. So having the actual campaign change in New Game Plus was super cool, and then they made Scholar of the First Sin, which also changed the campaign layout, and then the New Game Plus of Scholar of the First Sin did that again, and then for some reason they didn't do that again in Dark Souls Three. Which was a weird, it felt like a missing feature that they didn't do it again. Because that was a really cool part of the game. One of my favorite features. And then here we get a re-release of, of Dark Souls Remastered. And they didn't, they still didn't do it. Like, I, I, I would I would so love to have, like, an if, if they wanted to have the default campaign uh, maintained, they could do that. But they could, like, give you another mode where you just play, like, an alternate campaign layout. Like, like Scholar of the First Sin where they move things around, and they remix things and have some fun with it. You might have a concern thinking like, oh, but what if you split up the player base between two campaigns, but... I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't be able to summon people, or be invaded by people from the other campaign. Like... 
you, the, the choice of how your campaign is laid out would be your choice, but then if you invade somebody, they might be playing either campaign, and I, I don't think that's a problem either. The real reason is that I, as far as I can he tell, this game, this this uh, port is largely made by a Chinese company they farmed it out to, because Bandai Namco just wants to make money off of its properties, and Dark Souls 2 and 3 and Bloodborne are all on the modern console generation, but Dark Souls 1's not. So they're like, hey, let's port that. That'll make us money, and that's really the reason why this happened. There's a rubber stamp of, or there's like a. There's lip service to the idea that From Software worked on this to some extent, but I kind of doubt it was anything major. And even if it was, even if they were directly involved, it's just that Bandai Namco's goal was just to quickly port this out. So I don't think there was any real intention to make it more interesting than that, than that, than that which is kind of a bummer. Because I would love to see it be more interesting than, than that. Hey guys. This is our first time in New Londo, isn't it? But basically, while I think about the idea of playing multiplayer or sorcery or New Game Plus or something, I also think about like, oh, what if I do a modded run where all the enemies move around and it makes the campaign harder or something? There's so many options. But if I do all of the options, then I'm playing Dark Souls 1 non-stop for like a year. And I don't think that's the best idea. So you kind of have to pick and choose. Hello. You're a neat zone. And I'm kind of not really ready to deal with you right now. Yes, Doc. You could say that that crying hollow over the S-Doc was the community's response to the S-Doc. Ha ha ha. Hey there. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Rickett of Vinheim. I was once an established smith, though. Look at me now. Can you believe that? Hmm? What is it? What is it? Have you? <laughs> oh no. Don't worry. I've no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in things. Hmm? What is it? There's nothing to talk about. We're both cursed, undead. But, what's there really to moan about? Oh, Big Hand. Of course I've heard of him. Who hasn't in Vin? He was a royal member of Dragon School until he turned undead. I hear he was quite the character. Only that was a hundred years ago. What interest have you in the old eccentric now? Sorcery? Don't ask me how it actually works. We only fiddle and forge until it works itself in. That's how we do it in Vinheim. We prefer to leave the theorizing to those uppity scholars. Hmm? What is it? There's nothing. To We're both. What do you got to sell? Sorceries, catalyst. Not really interesting directly. And I don't think my weapon's ready for reinforcement right now. Uh, modify claymore. Currently a plus five. You can use green stuff to turn stuff into magic here. I think I need to go back to Andre if I want to ascend my weapon, but that's perfect because I need to go to Sen's fortress anyway, and he's on the way, so that's convenient for me. I'll probably not reinforce any of my armor necessarily, even though it's a reasonable thing to do. Come back soon. Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away out of idleness. I might get around to it at some point, I'm not sure. Weapons always just seem so important in these games, and so resource intensive to upgrade on their own. And then I also have a Pyromancy Flame to upgrade. And the idea of spending all these resources on my several uh, armor slots is a little less appealing at that point. 
But maybe. It's obviously useful because the, uh, upgrading your armor means that you get better stats without inc without having to deal with wearing heavier armor. So there's an appeal there. There's definitely an appeal. Although, nothing beats the strategy of don't get hit, right? I'm interested in dealing with a dragon, but I want to- I just want to establish the shortcut back to Firelink first, because I don't want to have to climb out of Blight Town if I mess up. It's way easier to have this all set up. Oh. Oh, right. That's when this happens. Well, to Andre it is. Yep, our fire, our bonfire is dead because Lawtrek has killed the Firekeeper for whatever his reasons are. Now I have two- I have this Firekeeper soul. That's the one that's not from them. Yep. Black Eye Orb, invade the world of murderer of Firekeeper. To defeat the perpetrator and reclaim the soul of the Firekeeper. The Black Eye keeps constant watch in the City of Gods, and Orlando. So now, in, in addition to the fact that we just Ring both bells, opening up Sen's fortress so we can get to Anor Orlando. Lautrec also kills the Firekeeper and flees to Anor Orlando. So we have, in addition to the main story reason, we have like a more personal reason to go there. Right. That guy's over there now. I don't feel like taking a closer look right now because I think jumping back is kind of a pain in the ass or something, if I remember correctly. But uh, it's the guy we met in the depths. That's like a collector of, stra of strange objects. He is, uh, just camped out in, like, the least convenient possible location. And he slowly stocks up with interesting items as you beat bosses, if I remember correctly. Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now, we have a new problem. It's noisy. It snores. And its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Damn. That stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. Oh, maybe it's time I do something about it. Oh, maybe. You planning on killing somebody? Hey, buddy. Get to you in a second. Hi, you big old fucking nightmare creature. God, you're a monstrosity. Uh Hey, Plague of Gripes. How you doing? Man. Is this what Patreon did to you, Plague? God, who, des who designed this? Because, <laughs> Jesus. Ugh. There's so many things to take issue with about everything about this creature. It's just really uncomfortable. It's like a mixture of really uncomfortable alien designs, but also like some some elements of like Attack on Titan, where it's just like a weird comical human face with exaggerated proportions and big dumb giant mouth clomping its teeth together that's also like just really unsettling when it's that big. Like it's just a deeply uncomfortable while strangely funny looking, which makes it even more uncomfortable looking creature. Ah, hello. Was it you who rang the Bell of Awakening? I am the Primordial Serpent, King Seeker Frapt, close friend of the great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the Bell of Awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate 
is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? Those who seek the realm of lords must brave Sen's fortress, a deadly house of traps. Many have gone before you, but none have returned. Fate has chosen you, but proceed with caution. Those who seek the realm, many fate. Farewell, chosen undead. I remain here and await thee. Aside from story stuff, the only purpose he serves NPC wise is that he eats things, which turns them into souls in some cases. So it's like your one chance to sell things essentially for items you don't want. I don't remember the numbers really being worth it. Uh, additionally, I think you can feed him certain Titanite types to get a different Titanite type. Usually it's like you're breaking down a larger one into smaller ones, I think is how it works or something. Hey there, you made it. Well, I see you made it out. Yeah, I, I made it out safely too. I have my Pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it, all you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, and unless you find the magics unsavory. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Well, let's get started right now. Pyromancy is the art of casting fire. Produce flame, then channel it, just as our ancestors did. A pyromancer must be in tune with nature herself. My home, the Great Swamp, is an abundant store of nature. You will understand one day. It only takes time. Pyromancy has a, well, rather primitive aspect to it. It messes poorly with advanced culture, and pyromancers are considered rather unsavory, which is fine, as I never got along with anybody anyway. So, for me, turning undead didn't change a thing. <laughs> a pyromancer's flame is, is a part of his own body. The flame develops right along with his skill. Oh, sorry. You're a pyromancer yourself. You, you already know this. A pyromancer's flame. He's got a surprisingly naturalistic uh, way of speaking, which is actually kind of a surprise just because so many characters, so many characters and performances are so weirdly stilted and listy or whatever you want to call it. List, I don't know. They're strange in a lot of the different Souls games. He actually almost sounds like he, he has like a similar demeanor to like the voice actor of Wheatley from Portal 2, but less stupid a bit. But like, so it's like weirdly natural how his dialogue plays out, which, which is just a surprise for this franchise where everyone's like a cartoon character or speaking very slowly about something as if they're trying out for Captain Kirk. Ha, 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 ha. Because everyone has to practice their creepy laugh that every single one of them has. Pyromancies. Unfortunately, I just got here, and that's kind of a bummer. I also want to upgrade the flame. Alright, it's starting off cheap. Getting a little more expensive. Getting a little more expensive. Goodbye then. Come back if you find anything new. Let's see how many souls I have on me. I would like to take stuff with me, and I'm gonna be leaving for a while. It's rather unfortunate timing that I recruit him, and then it's time for me to leave this place for quite a long time. Oh, well, as always. There's Fire Orb, which I think is just a bigger explosion, kind of, that does some decent damage. Flash Sweat. 
I'm not looking forward to a lot of fire enemies to deal with, so I'm not super concerned about that. Fireball would just mean I have more fireballs I can throw, which is pretty great. It's also not expensive. I think I want fire orb. It's kind of expensive. Combustion. Combustion's not expensive. Let's just go for it. Next upgrade's 4k. Next one's gonna be 5500, so it's, it's hiking up there a bit. Might as well just go for one of these. Iron flesh. There we go. Goodbye then. Come back if you find anything new. So after a campaign of not really having much in the way of uh, pyromancy so far, I've got a bunch of them now. Right, I can't swap them out because there's no bonfire here. I have to go find another one. Not hard. Especially since I've been everywhere around here already. Hey, your friend's left. Uh, oh, you again? Me? Uh, I've become separated from my lady. I've scoured near and far, but no sight of her. Where could she have gone? My lady, to think I swore to protect you with my life. Your Highness, where have you gone? I am entirely to blame for this. Oh, woe is me. I am unworthy. Deathly so. Oh, I'm sorry. Miracles, was it? Sometimes I lose myself. Pay me no mind. <laughs> you learned the ability to, to get the shrug gesture from him. <laughs> right, I can't reverse hollowing until I find my way back to another bonfire. Like, where is my- where is my highness gone? Shrug. Oh, you've learned how to shrug. The idea of learning gestures from he other humans is really bizarre. It's fine- it's fine when it's like you learn, like, praise the sun or something else really strange and made up for this game. But learning, like, shrugging and waving from other- other NPCs is like a really strange portion of the game. Excuse me, don't mind me. Bye-bye.